Now, famed US music producer and songwriter Quincy Jones has died. He was 91. Jones's seven decade career began in Chicago and led him to become one of the most renowned music producers of the modern era. He worked with a range, a wide range, I should say, of stars, including Frank Sinatra, Aretha Franklin, and Stevie Wonder. And he produced the best-selling album of all time, that's Michael Jackson's Thriller. His handprints are on some of the world's best-known pop and jazz music. For more than 70 years, Quincy Jones, a musician, composer and producer, was at the very heart of US music. He worked with icons like Michael Jackson, including producing his album Thriller, which is estimated to have sold more than 70 million copies. Jones also produced the all-star recording of We Are The World in 1985, a charity record for famine relief in Africa. I feel like the most blessed person on the planet to have come along the path that I came to musically from 13 years old, you know, starting with Ray Charles at 14, he was 16, and going through Clark Terry and Basie and Vinnie Carter. Everybody, from Billy Holiday, Louis Armstrong, all the way to 50 Cent. Jones was considered music royalty. Mr. Quincy Jones. Winning Grammys and awards all over the world. He's been nominated for 79 Grammys and won 27. He is one of, I think, 20 EGOT winners in the world. That's the holy quadrant of awards, for anybody who doesn't know, the Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. And oh yeah, he also produced the biggest selling album of all time and the biggest selling single of all time. Quincy Jones made it look easy, but his life did not begin that way. It was music that saved him from Chicago's street gangs. And it's more than seven decades of music for which he will be forever remembered. And DW's Brianna Ekenim joins me here at the big table to discuss this legend. So. Um, dozens of records and collaborations, and I have a list here with some of the artists. Miles Davis, Aretha Franklin, Ray Charles, Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra, Michael Jackson. The list of music royalty is nearly endless. Um, how did he become this successful? Yeah, like you said, there's so many names that he worked with, and that's a big part of his success, right, is yeah. he was such a collaborative uh, person. He worked with so many people, and he had deep bonds with these people. So one of those people, Michael Jackson, who was mentioned, and that success with the album Thriller yeah. um, was due to their chemistry. They had a really deep connection, um, and that's something he was known for. He, he you know, blended genres often. He worked with people across different um, musical styles, so that's a real big key to success is yeah. the collaborative the collaborative effort that he... Yeah, and, and he also composed soundtracks for more than 50 films and TV programs, right? And he was nominated for a number of Oscars. What impact did he have, would you say, Brianna, on pop culture and, and beyond? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, Quincy Jones um, was actually nominated for seven uh, Oscars for over 55 years, which is um, phenomenal. But he worked on The Wiz, which is where he met Michael Jackson, and then he also um, you know, went on to work on The Color Purple. So this is a, another example of his yeah. you know, genre bending and, and going outside of just one industry or one you know, uh, area of music. Um, but that particular, you know, uh, style, you know, cross-cultural difference or, or, or making um, music that crosses cultures or doing projects that, you know, go across different genres is something we see a lot today. So that's something he definitely established. And, um, yeah, he worked on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air even with Will Smith and helped launch his career. And that's something that's very culturally relevant today with the, uh, a resurgence and seeing mm -hmm. uh, references there. So, yeah. yeah, and maybe just give us a sense of what did he, how did he spend his last years? What had he been doing? Yeah, he actually um, was told he had to stop playing the trumpet a couple times for his health. So he really, you know, was uh, had a, a strong work ethic and some called him a workaholic, even himself. Um, so he was still very much around the music industry, living in LA, he was very close by, but he even traveled to Europe uh, to music festivals in Switzerland and such. Um, so he was, you know, very much uh, a, a relevant figure still to this day um, and something that people around the world felt so it's clear that his his legacy will last throughout 
for our time. Yeah, I just remember this one quote where he said, um, when you retire, you, you travel the world and you do it what you love, and I'm doing that anyway, so there's no need to retire. So exactly. uh, just to the point of he really worked till the really end. Yeah. Um, just give us a sense of how people are, you know, talking about his legacy today. I'm, I'm sure there's loads on, on social media, young people, um, you know, people in the industry. What have you been seeing? Yeah, exactly. People are flocking to X and, and Instagram and really um, pouring their hearts out for him. Um, and it's interesting, particularly to see the black community, really um, how they've been inspired by him and seeing him as this, you know, black success story in the U.S. And this is something I can relate to myself as a black American. Um, so it's something we've always just known his name. He's a household name. And if he can do it, you know, we can do it is kind of how it's always felt. So that's been interesting. Uh, rapper LL Cool J actually even um, said that he has been many things, but he's been a mentor. He's mm -hmm. been uh, a role model and a king. And he also said that music isn't music without him. And I think that's a sentiment a lot of people feel. Um, and I'm going to put you on the spot here and ask you, what was your, your favourite hit song or oh. what was it that you loved that Quincy Jones did? I mean, I have to say anything Michael Jackson and him worked on, I think, is something that's like ingrained in, in, in my memory and, and I can't yeah, think of anything else. I think that's, that's the big one. Iconic. What a legend. Well, Brianna Ikana, thank you so much for coming to the studio and talking to us about this thank legend. You. Appreciate it. Let's get more on Quincy Jones's that Life and Times with uh, showbiz journalist uh, KJ Matthews, who joins us from Los Angeles. Uh, welcome back to DW, uh, KJ. That list of music royalty that uh, Quincy Jones worked with, almost endless, and covers styles from jazz through swing and, of course, pop. So how did he become so accomplished in so many musical styles? You know, as you stated, he grew up in Chicago. I think he started off as a music prodigy or a phenom and really turned into a virtuoso in his craft. You are correct. Uh, he is so talented. Uh, he really crossed so many different spectrums and genres um, and just left an indelible mark. But, you know, many people might say that his, his younger brother, who had a job as an engineer at a radio station, and his neighbor, who was a singer in a choir, uh, got him interested in music, so to speak, when he was very young. And once he, had, he showed an interest in it, he just kind of took off. And he produced soundtracks for more than 50 films and TV programmes. He was nominated for and won Oscars, Emmys, Tonys and Grammys. And he also produced films. Tell us more about his impact on, on pop culture and beyond. You know, I was just looking at that today. He's an EGOT, but I was trying to say to myself, you know how they come up with these lists of the top 100 pop songs ever, the top 100 jazz songs ever, the top 100 songs ever, and do you know that there is not one song, I think, probably on those lists that cannot be uh, traced back to Quincy Jones? He worked with everyone from rock stars to pop stars to jazz stars. Uh, he did Fly Me to the Moon with Frank Sinatra. We all know about the uh, hottest selling uh, song of all time with uh, We Are the World. I think his superpower, to be honest with you, it wasn't just that he was a, a musical phenom, it's that he had an ability to work with everyone. And you almost have to be some sort of psychologist because in Hollywood, you know, so many people have such great, uh, uh, big attitudes and a lot of hubris. And somehow he was able to bring in 40 musicians from different genres and have them create We Are The World. You really have to have a certain temperament for that. And then he went on to really uh, work with Michael Jackson and give him the biggest, biggest success that he had of all time, that is Thriller. You don't do that unless you not only have talent, but you have to have an ability to work with everyone, to be gracious, to be patient. And he had all of those things. And he was also kind of a civil rights activist as well. You know, he supported uh, Martin Luther King Jr. So he really was just an all around uh, nice, decent, down to earth guy with an incredible musical talent. And a word about uh, how the industry, the entertainment industry is reacting to news of Quincy Jones's death. You know, uh, 
LL Cool J, the rapper, and had worked with him in the past, said that he was like a father to him at a time where he needed a father. The great actor uh, Coleman Domingo actually tweeted something as well, because you know he was in the latest incarnation of The Color Purple. And remember, uh, Quincy Jones did the score for The Color Purple, the original film that was out. And he basically said, he asked, uh, you know, where are you? Philly replied, his eyes, he just was so happy uh, that he was able to meet Quincy Jones at the time and said he kneeled before a king. So he was just uh, giving props to him as well. So, so many people are waking up here in Los Angeles and even in New York and basically can't believe right. uh, the news. But, you know, he had such a long life at 91 years old. He had been okay. in the music business for over seven years. Our showbiz journalist KJ Matthews in L.A. Thank you so much. Well, Ronze Asangbedo is a journalist and pop culture commentator and joins us from Washington. Welcome to DW. Uh, that list of, of musical royalty that uh, Quincy Jones worked with is almost endless and covered styles from jazz through swing and, of course, pop. How did he become so accomplished in so many musical styles? I think the cool thing about Quincy Jones is that he kept an open mind. Uh, you know, he started as an arranger and a conductor and, you know, doing jazz orchestras. And most people in those spaces are not open to pop music and definitely not hip hop. And I think he just was open to music and I think was a true music lover. And that's why he was such an amazing musician. And so he worked with everyone from, you know, Frank Sinatra and Leslie Gore and Michael Jackson, but also, you know, Kumo D and Big Daddy Kane and, 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 and rappers in the 90s. And so he was truly special in that way. And over decades, because the, 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 the list in, includes people like who go way back, like Ray Charles and, uh, and uh, Ella Fitzgerald. Right, right. Uh, you know, he met Ray, Ray Charles in high school, actually, when he was 14 and Ray Charles was 16. And, and actually he said that Ray Charles was an early influence. And so, uh, you know, it's really special for someone to have... So, touched so many uh, genres and, and seen so many people. He played uh, with Elvis Presley doing his six, first six TV appearances. And of course, there was a work with Michael Jackson, which it was just truly classic. And, and really, I think that's what most people know him for. But he really has a 70 year career that was, you know, started long before Michael Jackson came along and, and lasted uh, after. Yeah, onto soundtracks for more than 50 films and TV programs, nominated for and won Oscars, Emmys, Tonys and Grammys, and produced films. Tell us more about his impact on uh, pop culture and beyond. You know, like I mentioned, you know, it, he spans so many genres. I think his work with Michael Jackson, again, I have to say, uh, will be probably his his crown jewel. Uh, Thriller is the best-selling album of all time, uh, but also the work on the Bad and Off the Wall albums are classics. And uh, you know, he's he's won 28 Grammys and until you know recently was the was the second most awarded artist. Uh, so uh, you know, only Beyonce and George Solti have more Grammys. And I think. You know, like I said, it's the music, it's the movies. He's he's produced the theme songs for you know countless shows. He he started a magazine, Vibe magazine, was founded by Quincy Jones. Um, you know, his you know, the Austin Powers theme song is actually uh, a song that he made in the '60s. And so it's just it's hard to truly you know encapsulate all that Quincy Jones is. Uh, you know, as a movie producer, he he basically brought Oprah Winfrey and Whoopi Goldberg to prominence with the color purple. Um, you know, I could go on and on and on. He was truly, truly special. And uh, so tell us um, about the, some of the reactions from uh, the entertainment industry to this news. You know, everyone's really sad and uh, you know and the, the reactions with the media and you know everyone from Cheryl Lee Ralph to uh, you know now Rogers even the Michael Jackson estate has put out a statement uh, you know all reeling from uh, from the loss of just a, a musical giant and and just wanted the best to ever do it okay thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, Ronze Ronze Sangbedo thank you so much